Welcome to the Hallow Leadership Update, where we talk about all things leadership and provide you with actionable ideas and frameworks, which, when you incorporate them into your daily work activities, can have a truly positive influence on your career and on your company's culture. Now, today I want to revisit a much discussed topic, vulnerability. However, today I want to look at it through a slightly different lens. But before we dive in, be sure to click the subscribe button below so that we can continue providing information to support you as an authentic leader and assist you in raising your level and your team's level for that matter of high performance. Now, as a coach and a facilitator working with companies to develop organizational cultures based on honesty and open communication, I talk about vulnerability all the time. In fact, it's a, such a common topic that I sometimes refer to vulnerability simply as the V word, but that's not the only reason I do it. I do it because as soon as people hear the word vulnerability, they can get very, very uncomfortable. The fact is most people I encounter believe that vulnerability equals weakness. And if you think about it, our fixed belief systems have been wired for years by phrases such as don't leave yourself vulnerable to attack. Now, for some men, the fear might be based on the need to be the strong one, the strong one in the family, possibly. For some women in the workplace, as I've learned more recently, there can be an intense fear that any display of weakness, often confused with vulnerability, can be a death knell. I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown, and I've listened to her TED Talk, The Power of Vulnerability, more times than I could possibly remember. In fact, I listened to it again just recently, but this time, a particular part of it really stood out to me for the first time. It just grabbed my attention. While the word vulnerability in and of itself can be a negative trigger for so many, Brene stated that those that truly are open and vulnerable don't think of it that way at all. And I thought about it and I said, when I go about my day, I don't walk out into the world and say, now just go out there and be vulnerable. But I do find myself making the choice to be what I have referred to as wholehearted. So let's talk about that a little bit. According to Brene, the key difference between those people that experience love and belonging in their lives and those that don't is that those that do believe they are worthy of love and belonging. That's the only difference. Brene goes on to say that these wholehearted people have a sense of courage. Now, when courage first came into the English language, it was from the Latin word core, C-O-R, meaning heart. And the original definition was to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart. So these are wholehearted people we're talking about, living their lives from a deep sense of worthiness. And from this sense of worthiness, they draw the courage to be who they are, imperfections and all. Renee continues saying that these people have the compassion to be kind to themselves first and then to others, because as it turns out, we can't practice compassion with other people if we can't treat ourselves kindly. And lastly, Renee notes that these people have connection in their lives and careers. Why? Because they're willing to let go of their image. They're willing to let go of who they think others want them to be in order to be themselves. And according to Brene, people that are wholehearted, vulnerable, don't view that quality as either good or bad. They just view it as necessary for connection. So when we take the idea of being wholehearted and we apply it to our workplace, we see that we can create that kind of connection with our colleagues. And it becomes possible to have a new kind of influence in our work environment. If we let ourselves be seen, even if we cannot control the outcome, it empowers those around us to be more authentic as well, more genuine, more real in how they're showing up. And this can kickstart a virtuous cycle and drive a whole new level of authenticity across the organization. So I ask you, what would it take for you to show up wholeheartedly with the courage to be imperfect, the compassion to be kind, and the willingness to create true connection? If leadership is really taking the initiative without waiting for someone else to make the first move, I ask you, what can you do today to begin modeling a spirit of wholeheartedness to the team? If you're ready to engage and learn, sign up for the Hallett Leadership Updates in the video description below. You'll receive periodic updates that allow us to support you in becoming and continuing to be an authentic leader. And if you're ready to jump in with both feet, 
and explore what wholeheartedness might really look like for you and in your organization, please get in touch with us. Until next time, stay safe and stay healthy.